Hey, Garrett, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And we are super excited to have you here. Uh, you went on quite a journey that was life changing and you learned a lot of lessons along the way that will be super beneficial for everybody listening today. So we're glad that you're here to share. But before we get into that, can you go ahead and just take a moment and introduce yourself to our audience and let them know what you're all about? Of course. Uh, I'm Garrett Philbin, the founder of Be Awesome Not Broke. And what I do is I help people get out of debt, save for things that matter, and stop feeling guilty about how they use their money. So that's my day job. And then also on the side, I'm on the board of the Financial Planning Association of New York and also serve as the marketing director for the Financial Fitness Workshop. So that's more like the professional stuff that I do. But uh, I'm actually a career changer. So I wasn't always helping people with money. I actually spent the previous five or so years in the music business um, out here in New York, where I still currently am. Uh, was at Sony for a couple of years, then helped co-found a couple of music production companies with some buddies from college, but just like ultimately found out that the music industry and the ad industry, which I was also in, like, I just didn't love it. And, uh, you know, I spent, it, it just wasn't that fulfilling <laughs> to be honest. I'd spent a couple of years out of college volunteering full time at a high school in Portland, Oregon for low income students from troubled backgrounds. And I just loved it. Like the mentoring aspect of it, the teaching aspect of it was so much fun and I, and I missed that in, in what I, and I had none of that in the music business. So I've always been a personal finance and money nerd. And so ultimately I decided to try and combine that love for mentoring and my love for personal finance. And that kind of led me to where I am today in this mission of like helping people no longer see money as a barrier to like living an awesome life and doing great things in the world. So that's kind of where I'm at now and, and how I got there. And it, it's super fun. It's challenging because it's exciting. The world of entrepreneurship is like the highest highs, lowest lows, sometimes within the same day. I can't remember who quoted that. I'm definitely stealing it, but I love it. And it's so true. But just to be feel in alignment with my purpose and what I'm doing is great. And therefore trying to figure out how to unlock that, especially around money with other people as well. Wow, that's incredible. So, I mean, let, let's let's backtrack just a little bit because so many people are trying to break into the music business and you were trying to break out of the music business, which is amazing. I mean, you attain something that most people like dream of. You're working for one of the major companies and Sony and probably living the rock star life, so to speak. But you weren't like you said, you weren't happy. And so then you launched um, some entrepreneurship endeavors outside. You moved along from Sony. And then even after you launched into entrepreneurship, there were still more. And so you took a work road trip. Tell us how you got to that point and tell us about the trip overall. For sure. Uh, one point that I do want to make, because this is something that I I hear and see a lot in other people and, and I saw in myself was, you get in, I was in something that on the outside sounds super sexy, right? I'm in the music industry, I'm working in New York, I'm working for Sony on the Columbia and Epic labels, like we got Beyonce, we got Bay. like, come on, this is, this is living the life. But what it sounds like on the outside and actually what it is under the hood are often two very different things. And people get enamored with this sense of what something is and kind of that sexy, shiny exterior. And if I just really found that underneath all of that, it didn't totally resonate with who I was. And there are some people who love it and who live for it. But ultimately, that wasn't my goal and what made me happy. And so I'll probably, you know, come back to this throughout the podcast. But just that idea of it, it has to be in alignment. You have to know what you really want and not live somebody else's dream, but live the one that you genuinely feel you want to be living. So just to address that point, because it is something that comes up a lot when people hear that history. But, you know, I feel that like working for myself and, and the, the life that I have now is just so much more fulfilling, um, maybe less sexy at times, but <laughs> just as uh, certainly a lot more fulfilling. And it allows me to do stuff like this road trip that uh, you brought up. Uh, so back in late July, I went on a work slash road trip. Uh, for two months around the western part of the United States. It stemmed from me, like, the motivation for it really was 
honestly, I was like feeling kind of lost here in New York a little bit. Um, entrepreneurship can be a little tough at times. And I felt like I had over my time in New York, not necessarily built the friendships that I'd really wanted. I hadn't really, <laughs> I love being in nature. I'm from California. I love hiking, being outdoors. I hadn't like connected with that part of me. Uh, I'd kind of lost my work life balance again, entrepreneurship taking a lot of time and, and I'd lost balance there. And it just was, I came up with this idea of like, I need to get back to center. I need to like go back to the friends on the West coast who know me and go and see them. I need to travel, get out in nature. Uh, I have a location independent business. So can I actually like put that to the test and work from my laptop while traveling around and doing 10 States in two months? And, and really that's where it stemmed from a, a want to push my own boundaries, see what's possible. But honestly, a little form of like escapism, cause I wasn't super happy in New York at that time. And so I wanted to get out and try and reconnect with what I thought was going to make me happy. Now you talk about the fact that, you know, you were doing a lot of self-reflection and trying to figure things out and you found that you were not where you needed to be. And so you launched out. Um, on this work road trip, which which was phenomenal and kind of reflecting on the reflection, you said that there's quite a happiness crisis going on in the world right now. Can you kind of dive deeper on that and let us know what you mean by that? Yeah, for sure. So there are a couple stats I'm going to throw out you that are throw out to you that are really interesting that like only 30 percent. I think it's 33% of Americans are truly happy here in 2016. It's according to a Harris poll. They're one of the big ones. Uh, over half, so 52% of Americans are unhappy with their jobs. And 62%, I think, of Americans say they frequently worry about their finances. So over half the population is unhappy with either their jobs or their money. And this is something that it, it's interesting because like, – we can be more connected than ever. We have the ability to be more productive than ever. We're richer here in America than most other countries. And yet there is this common thread of unhappiness. Like, why is that? And, you know, from my standpoint, because I work around money, I, I see it as that people often think that it's a lack of money that's making them unhappy. But it's not really the money. Uh, what it is, is it's a lack of not knowing what's really important. Uh, not being clear on why those things are important and not having a plan to work towards them. So people think that, again, if I get that job at Sony, I'm going to be happy. If I make 100K, I'm going to be happy. But we haven't really done the work to, to sit back and say, but why do I need money in the first place? Why, what do I want the money to do? What would that 100K actually allow me to do that I can't just proactively start creating in my life right now? And that's with the road trip. What I discovered is that there were things like my lack of uh, really strong friendships, my lack of getting out into nature, my lack of work life balance. Like that was all stuff I could do and work on in New York. It didn't require me to have to go on a road trip to get away. Ultimately, um, the road trip, you know, we'll get into this certainly helped me discover that I was kind of shying away from creating those here back at home. But yeah, it's, it's very possible just to create with what we have and really be happy with what we have. But I think a lot of us have lost sight of that. And that's why we have such this crisis of happiness, um, because people aren't connected to what truly matters and what makes them happy, whether financially or otherwise. After you were able to kind of reflect and learn and see, you know, what was really the things that made you happy, how did discovering that affect your finances personally? It helped by showing me, like, A, what is enough. Um, so on the road trip, it's really interesting. I actually spent less money traveling around than I did living in New York. <laughs> and and it's, it's crazy. I never would have thought it I, because I was able to rent out my room on Airbnb, which helped so I didn't have to pay rent. But other than that, like I still was traveling on the road, so I had to potentially you know, either camp or stay with friends or Airbnb. But it, it really made me ask, like, what is important to me? And what I said was important to me was friendships, was trying to find a better work-life balance and getting out into nature. 
So one of the ways that it affected kind of how I handle finances is I realized that I didn't care about staring, staying in a nice Airbnb. I didn't care about staying in any hotels. What I did was I stayed with friends. I camped by the side of the road. I camped illegally a lot. And over the entirety of the trip, over those two months, I spent $5 on camping. I paid $5 for a group campsite in Glacier National Park. But that ability to, that's just not important to me. I'm totally okay sleeping under the stars on the ground. And being in a nice place isn't important to me. And knowing that allowed me to save thousands of dollars on that trip and use it for other things that mattered more, such as a random barbecue uh, adventure after meeting a pair of hikers on the trail and going out and getting a boatload of barbecue and a couple beers. And it allowed me to, when opportunities came up to spontaneously do things with people who I met along the way, I could say yes, because I had decided that my money was more important to, you know, it was better for it to go to these areas that I knew were important to me, not something like staying in an Airbnb or hotel that would have been important to other people. So it just gave me clarity in trying to think of, you know, what really matters first and then putting my money towards it. So a tangible example was I came back to New York and said, I'm not going to spend money at bars for a month because it's not the booze that to me makes the experience. It's hanging out with friends and bars are just what people go to in New York as a go to. Like, so if the bar and the alcohol isn't the reason, then how can I just be with friends more? So now I have people over more. We do more excursions that aren't going to bars, going to museums, going on hikes, just exploring the city. And so it's, I, I think I learned to just be very discerning with what I actually care about and then only putting money towards those things. And that forces me to get creative about not spending money in the things that don't ultimately matter. Now, part of your transition and journey to kind of get into a place of being much more happy with your life was you made the move from this great, you know, in, in a lot of people's eyes, this great quote unquote job to becoming an entrepreneur. You started a couple of businesses on your own. What led you to say, yeah, I don't like my current job. I'm going to start something on my own. Cause some people say, I don't like my job. I'm gonna go find a better job. But what you did was you said, I'm going to strike out on my own. What kind of led you to go that route? Uh, what, so I can't take total credit for this. And actually this is something that I would say is one of the most important things in me making this transition from corporate employee to entrepreneur is I had people who were cheering me on to succeed and not only cheering me on, but I didn't actually start. So the music production companies, I wasn't the one leading the charge for founding those. I kind of came in as a, as a partner and I was at Sony for eight or so months while one of the other co-founders of this music production company, he said, dude, when are you going to leave? When are you going to quit Sony? When are you going to come out here, dude? We need you. And it took me eight months to hear him, to really hear him and believe that I could make the jump. Because at that, at that time, like I had a steady job. I didn't like the job, but I didn't think that I had skills that were really transferable. Uh, I didn't have the self-confidence to really make the leap. I was like, who am I to think that I can go and help start this new company with two other guys and that will be successful? I had all the self-doubt, all of the reasons why I couldn't do it, but I also had someone who would not shut the hell up about telling me to come and, and that I could do it. And I have to, I, I believe 100% that I would not be where I am today without him pushing for me every step of the way during those eight months. And just building a, a team, a, a, like your rowboat, a connection around, like people around you who believe in you and are willing to be honest and say, dude, I see something in you that you don't. And, and who are willing to just hound you day after day with that belief, um, that was incredible. And honestly, like, yes, I have done a lot since that point to help put me where I am, but I would be nowhere near where I am today without the support of someone in my corner and multiple people at that. So that honestly was the biggest one. Um, and I just, I, not like getting emotional, but it is kind of interesting just to think like I would be in a wholly different place if not for the people who cared about me. So I have to give credit where credit is due there. That's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> 
So let's pull back the curtain a little bit on that transition period from employee to entrepreneur, because I think a lot of people sell, you know, fairy tales when it comes to that move. Like, yeah, just jump. Just take the leap. You can do it. Have faith. Walk on water. Tell us about some of the obstacles that propped its head up when you were making this transition and how you were able to overcome it. So I need to be incredibly transparent in this, in admitting that I had a leg up on many people coming to this. So as part of my volunteer experience for two years, I didn't make any money. I don't know if you've heard, but volunteering doesn't pay. Uh, however, I had we had some family friends who were incredibly gracious, uh, giving, and said, hey, you know what? You're not making any money right now. What we're going to do is we're going to give you some money to make up for the fact that you weren't going to make any. And so I, that was back in 2011. I then at the end of that had 26 grand in my checking account to allow me to move to New York. So this is also going to be a lesson in it's not just what position you start from, but it's what you do with it because I didn't, okay, I was incredibly fortunate and blessed and like so much privilege to be able to be in that position. But I also did not spend that money. So about four years into New York, I still had about 23 grand of that. And what that allowed me to do is that runway, which you're right, you can't just quit your job and walk on water and get there. Like you have to have some sort of cushion. You have to have, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's money in the bank, you have to have something to help ease those transitions. And honestly, that cushion is what allowed me to take the leap from Sony to starting those other companies. It allowed me to help float those other companies at times. And that ultimately allowed me to quit uh, the music production companies and start Be Awesome Not Broke. And for those who want to take the leap but might be thinking about taking it early, I think the one thing that I would say is um, make sure you have enough money. Because if you don't have enough money, if you're really in whatever job you want to get into to serve, if you truly want to get out there and help people, the single biggest way you can get into not helping people is to be worried about your own money when you're starting your own business. Because then it's no longer about the people that you're helping, it's about I need money, I need this for me, I need cash flow, and you aren't gonna be thinking about what is in the best interest and how can I best serve my clients. It's gonna be about that money that you need right then, and so just think about the ultimate people who you're gonna be affecting as well, and that you, if you're gonna be your best self, you can't do it from this position of lack, from not having enough. So giving yourself that runway is, at least in my experience, that was the biggest thing that has allowed me to be able to do what I do in the way I wanna do it. Love reading, but wish you had more time to get into your favorite books? What if you could use the time you already have and listen to the books you already love? Well, now you can with Audible. With Audible Books, you can be inspired, entertained, and educated anywhere, anytime. Choose from the best sellers in self-development, business, nonfiction, and more. So what are you waiting for? Your first 30 days are free. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible to get started today. That's hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible. Yeah, I think that's super important because when you jump you know, so to speak, into the world of entrepreneurship and you don't have the proper cushion. Now you're making decisions totally based on trying to bring in income, trying to meet your needs financially and materialistically. Whereas if you have that cushion and you can float a little bit, now you can make the type of decisions that you want to make that align with your value system and the value system of the business that you're trying to operate. So I think what you're saying is super duper important. And I, and I hope that everybody took note of that because that is a huge point to take away from this episode today. Now, take us to the actual road trip. This two-month journey you went on, you saw lots of places, saw lots of people, talked to many of them. What were some of the lessons about life that you took from the conclusion of this two-month journey that you went on? Oh, man, uh, I will try and <laughs> put it into a few kind of short learnings. Man, uh, so just to hit the highlights, um, so for me, I learned, and I mentioned this, like that I wanted to get out of 
New York that kind of I hadn't made the friends here I thought I'd wanted to and that, you know, I wanted to be in nature more. I learned that environment really matters for me. And I think for a lot of people, New York as a city is always hustle, like go, 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 go. People come here to get to a certain stage of their careers and then leave. They want to, uh, there's almost this um, sense that work defines who you are. And if you aren't always working, then like overworking is a sense of pride here in the city. And I learned that that affects me to a negative degree. And so I need to get to a place and be in an environment where people identify themselves by more than their jobs. Uh, I need to be in a place where I can run outside and be in a hill, like be in the hills in 10 minutes or 20. Like I, I just realized that what I surround myself with in an environment really affects who I am as a person. And that's not true for everybody, but it is true for me. And so like waking up at the foothills of the Grand Tetons and pulling out my laptop and working from the back and then shutting it down and going on a hike in the afternoon, it's just like this, this is it. <laughs> like this is what I want to be around. And so definitely environment um, for some people, especially for me, is is a really big deal. Uh, w another one is progress over perfection. Uh, I think definitely in our finances, a lot of people, and I've been in this boat myself, like we, we don't take action because we're worried that we aren't going to do it perfectly. And the biggest thing I learned is like, just shoot for 70, shoot for 70 or 75%. And then you'll figure it out and then just tweak, you know, iterate, just try something and iterate. So was the road trip a success in the grand scheme that yes, I learned a boatload about myself, about who I want to be, how I want to operate. Was it fun all of the time? Absolutely not. But that's also not the point. The point is to learn by simply saying yes to this experience about who I am and also like what I would do differently. I would not travel every single day. I would not try 10 states in two months. But again, it, the point wasn't to get it perfect. It was just to say yes and then learn. And honestly, uh, I think the last is that my, what I see as unfortunate for myself is still incredibly fortunate in any other person's world. Like the fact that I had the opportunity to travel around the country for two months while working and be able to like have places to stay and not be eaten by bears and come back and like have a job. I am so incredibly fortunate to even say that I could do that. Um, so just always keeping in the back of my mind, like gratitude and appreciation for what I have. And that also ties in with money. <laughs> Uh, in that it doesn't matter how much you make, you can find someone making $5 million, $50 million who hates their life. It's not about how much you make to a certain degree. Of course, you have to have enough for the basic needs, but over that, you know, it's all about just how much do you really, how much is enough? You can define how much that is for you. And once you do that, um, and you have that gratitude and appreciation, that's honestly where happiness is found. Now, what if somebody's tuned in and, you know, they're, they're listening to you and they're now they're, they're starting to think and they're starting to reflect and they feel like, you know what, maybe I am in a happiness crisis when it comes to my finances. You know, as I sit here and think about it and I'm listening to what Garrett is telling me, uh, what advice would you give them to kind of get things turned around? So it depends a little bit on why they're unhappy. So if they're unhappy because they don't have a job, like they have zero income, they have a bunch of credit card and student loan debt, and they have no idea of how to make progress immediately, like that is, that's a difficult place to be. That's a tough scenario and there are no real, real easy options. But for a lot of people and many who I talk to, they have a steady job or a job that brings in income. You know, they have money coming in to cover the basics and even some of their wants. They're able to travel, they're able to go out, and yet they're still unhappy. And so for them, it's it's more of a crisis because I would say, number one, they aren't using their money in a way that's aligned with their values and what's really important to them, and they don't know what enough looks like for them. So it really comes down to figuring out why you want money in the first place. And, and I touched on this at the very top of the episode, like why do you need the money? Why do you want the money? What is it actually gonna help you get to? 
what things are important to you in life. Is it, is it family? Is it travel? Is it starting your own business? Is it making an impact in the world? What are those things that really matter to you? And then saying, okay, how am I going to put my money towards those things? And then the cool thing about that is when you define what's important to you and then actively put your money towards those things, it's not like you're giving up on, you know, when people say cut out that $5 latte, you know, it's not like you're giving up that $5 latte. You're making an active and empowered proactive choice to say, I just think that putting money away towards a trip to go see my family for a second time this year is more important than that. It's not that I have to give it up. It's that I'm making a proactive choice to put my money elsewhere. And that flip, that different mindset is really important because if you feel you're giving up and that you always have to say no to things, that's a crappy place to be. And so it's really aligning your spending with your values and figuring out how much you truly need to spend to make you happy. And for most people, when they really answer those two questions, it's uh, that how much they need to spend and how much it costs to be happy is really a lot less than they would think. Now, you're a financial coach and you've helped tons of people in the area of personal finance. Is, you know, kind of the advice you just gave or is it something else? What What's the biggest thing that holds most people back from achieving financial goals? Because a lot of people have these ideas in mind where they want to be financially. They, they can kind of picture it, but there's there's something that keeps them from what they want and their current reality. Like, what do you see as holding most people back? If I couldn't say not having a sense of what their goals are, so if I couldn't cheat and have that be my answer, I would say that it is uh, a lack of awareness and a lack of a plan. So the awareness portion, yeah, that's both awareness in terms of what their goals and values are, but also not really an awareness of their finances, to be honest. They have you know, they'll say, okay, I have a sense of where my money's going and I think I'm putting this much here and I have an idea of how much I'm spending on going out, but they don't actually know. And without having a clear picture of what's actually going on, they can't make any tangible change to it, to the behavior that they're doing. So they, cause mental accounting, which is what I call it is very different than real accounting. So people will say, you know, I have a lot of clients who I've worked with who will say, yeah, I think I'm spending like 200 a month, $200 a month or so eating out. And then we look at it and it's like, dude, you're spending 700. And there's just this massive difference that over a couple different categories, it adds up. But that's where the emotional piece comes in for people where they don't want to look at their spending because it, it forces them to then confront who they think they are and who they really are. Because how you spend, if you, there's a quote I love by Lynn Twist, it, I'm going to butcher it or paraphrase it, but it says, if you want to see who you really are, what you value and what matters to you in life, take a look at your checkbook, your bank statements, and, like credit card statements, because how you spend your money is a reflection of what you value in life. So people have this visceral kind of fear of looking into their their accounts and really coming face to face with the fact that how I'm spending my money might not be in alignment. So awareness and building that is so important um, because once you get that awareness, you can start proactively changing that behavior and saying, oh, I spent this much money in this category. Do I want to keep doing that? But again, it's not just about awareness. You also have to have a plan because I know a lot of people who have used Mint who have used YNAB and going through and categorizing every transaction all the time, it's hard. Some people aren't built that way. And people say budgeting sucks for a reason. It's like, yeah, these are great tools, but if they don't work for a lot of people, that's a problem. So it's, it's people also don't have the tools and a plan of how to come up with a system that works for them, that once they have that awareness, how to integrate that and put the tools together in place in a way so they can continue to do that proactively moving forward. Awesome. So speaking of moving forward, help our audience kind of move forward. What, what are some action steps they can take because they have heard your advice. They realize they're not where they want to be. Now they're trying to figure out, OK, I'm ready to make some moves to get to a place of happiness with my finances. What are some things you would tell them to do? 
I mean, what I would tell them to do is really start with that awareness piece. So start by figuring out why you want money, like why money matters to you, what is important to you in your life, and really get clear on your values uh, and those things that are important to you. So that's on more of the goal side. And then on the, on the financial side, like figure out where your money is going. Get a sense of how much money is coming in, how much money is going out, and where it's going. And then that will give you that clarity uh, and you will understand, okay, not only where I want to be in terms of uh, your values and what is important to you in life, then you'll know where you stand, such as, okay, here's where I'm at financially. And then you can start figuring out how to bridge the gap. Um, I actually have on my uh, site a guide called the Be Awesome, How to Be Awesome and Not Broke Guide. And it just kind of walks you through these steps that I've been talking about, gives you some prompts, and it's free. And you just go through and it'll ask you those questions like, what is your why? What is important to you? Here, start setting up a budget and, and doing it in a way where it kind of leads you along that path and gives people kind of set steps to do. So that would be a resource I would say people can just go to and download for free. And hopefully that can help start those creative juices flowing and get them asking those questions and gaining that awareness. And we'll be sure to have a link to Garrett's guide to how to be awesome and not broke. In the show notes of this episode, just head over to hisandhermoney.com. Check out Garrett's interview and you will find the link to his guide there. Now, in addition to them downloading the guide and going through the steps, we are avid promoters of self-education. So are there some book recommendations that you would offer up that our audience should check out on their journey to finding this happiness and getting their finances to a place where they want it? Definitely. Uh, the first I would recommend is The Soul of Money by Lynn Twist. So this is a book that talks about money from a more macro perspective, from like the approach, as you can tell by the title, like The Soul of Money. It's not about the X's and O's. It's more about how to approach viewing money. And she was a fundraiser for many, many years, and she traveled around the world and was able to see how money works in different cultures. So she has this really interesting understanding of how money works in different societies and has seen what works and what doesn't from a mindset approach to money. So that's really great on the mindset approach. A great tactical, both tactical and mindset approach book is Your Money or Your Life by, I think it's Vicki Robin, Joe Dominguez, and Monique Tilford. And that is both, uh, what I love about it is one of the things they have in there is it makes you go through or has you go through and calculate how you spend your time. So all of the time that you spend regarding work. So that's at work, commuting to work, spending on lunches at work, all these different things. And then calculating, you may make $25 an hour at work, but once you calculate all the hours that you spend at work, getting to work, paying for lunches, paying for clothes, all this stuff, and you calculate what your actual hourly wage is, it makes you look at it and say, holy crap, like I am living, I'm making $9 an hour. And you start looking then if, if it costs me an hour to make only $9 and I'm buying all of this frivolous stuff, that just costs me like 15 hours at work to buy this shirt. And it makes you start thinking about how you spend your money in a really different way because you're seeing the true cost of everything that you're bringing into your life. And uh, the last one would be The One Page Financial Plan by Carl Richards, which is a great book in both kind of going on the why money is important, but it really helps. Um, it's not too much about the tactics. It really just says, look, get everything onto one page. You know, when you have gold, a lot of people try to tackle too much and make it really complicated. And so he's a big proponent of just saying, all right, what are the two or three goals that you have? Put them on one page, look at those, just keep them top of mind, and having simple, well laid out goals um, that aren't super complicated is a really great way to allow progress to happen and not get overwhelmed. So I really like his approach to keeping things simple. Awesome. Now, can you do us a favor and tell our audience all about your amazing website, BeAwesomeNotBroke.com, and how they can stay connected with you? Of course. The website is BeAwesomeNotBroke. Uh, also, the I like to think one of the most fun company names and the least professional company names, but hey, I, I chose this life. Uh, yeah, and you can head there to BeAwesomeNotBroke.com to learn more about what I do as a coach, 
You can read about my journey with entrepreneurship and money on my blog. And again, the guide is available on the site. I know it'll be in the show links, but you can find it directly on the landing page there. Uh, I also recently wrote an article called uh, Seven Ways to Make Your Money Matter, which if you're feeling a little bit lost after November 8th, which some of us are, uh, figuring out how to make a difference with social causes and other causes that you care about, um, no matter what side of the aisle that you're on, uh, I'd recommend checking that out because it's a way to pretty much a guide on how to use your money in a way that gives you power to make a difference. So that's on the most recent one on the blog and I've been getting some great feedback on that. Uh, yeah, so that's how people can check me out. And uh, also just as we're coming up on the new year, you know, now is the time when a lot of people are looking backwards and saying, okay, I was able to do this and this, but a lot of times money is again something where they're like, oh, here was a goal that I once again didn't make. And so coming into the new year, a lot of people are always thinking, okay, now is the time that I'm going to do it. Now is the time that I'm going to do it. And I think a big place where people fail is not having that plan and not having accountability. So if uh, I'm also putting on a group program starting in January. So if people are interested, I have four slots available for that. If they want to start and have that awareness, build the awareness, a plan and accountability. Uh, that's something that they can also connect uh, with me on. And the best way to do that, honestly, to get in touch is via email. So it's just Garrett at BeAwesomeNotBroke.com. Uh, don't hit me up on Twitter. I'm terrible with Twitter. Uh, <laughs> not on Instagram. I'm old school, man. I just love email. It's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, yeah. So that would be the best way, I would say. Or sending me, like, I have the about form or the, uh, what is it, the get in touch with me form on my website. You can do that, too. Awesome. Garrett, this has been super helpful. We really love your story and the lessons that you shared on the show today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to make this happen. Dude, I just appreciate you guys having me on the show. Thanks again.